subscribe to my channel to be notified for future videos. Hi, I'm Nadine and today I would like to show you how you can make your homemade pasta from scratch and you won't need many ingredients, just some flour, egg, olive oil and salt. And it's actually pretty easy to make and it tastes so much better and much more healthier. So I'm gonna start and we're gonna do the old fashioned way. We will do it on the table. That means you don't need any machine for anything. I'm going to use Fahana flour, which means it's a stone ground flour. It comes from Italy, but you can use any other stone ground flour as well. It's much better than just using cake flour. Two cups, if you don't have cups, 500 gram will do as well. And I'm adding two cups of flour onto the table. Make sure your table is clean, obviously, <laughs> before you start. So I'm gonna put these two cups in the middle of the table and I'm adding my salt to this. So salt is half a teaspoon, 2.5 mils, and I'm mixing my salt with my flour. And I make a little well in the middle. So in here we're gonna add three eggs and I'm putting them right into the middle. Some of the recipes they say you can use extra egg yellow, that makes it a little bit more softer. Um, sometimes I do that as well, but that's a very, very basic recipe. Okay, now I'm gonna add the olive oil and you need one tablespoon of olive oil. You add it into your egg mixture. Use an extra virgin, the better your oil, the better result you will have. We need a little bit of extra flour for later on, so I'm gonna put a bit into my bowl. I'm going to use my fork and I'm breaking my egg yellows first and mix my egg in the beginning, in the middle. So you see we're doing this all on the table. So first make sure it's all well combined. Little tip, if you want to make a green pasta or a beetroot pasta or maybe a black pasta, you would add your coloring or in this case for red I would use beetroot or a chlorophyll for green and I would mix that into your egg mixture. Right, so now we're going, you can see it has nicely combined. Now we're going to add slowly a little bit of the flour into our egg mixture. It will become slowly but surely a dough. It can take a little bit of time and you combine more and more and more and you obviously want to keep your flour on the outside or you can push a little bit in as well once it starts to become thicker then we can get rid of our fork and we use our hands i prefer to do it longer with the fork it just makes it easier with kneading at a later stage before you touch your mixture, make sure your hand is full of flour. This will make sure that your mixture is not going to stick as much on your hands. And now I'm going to start kneading it. When you knead something with your hands, you're kneading with the palm of your hands and not with your fingertips. So you're pushing it away and you roll it towards you. So we want to incorporate as much flour as we have on the table. I've got a card here, so if you find something is sticking, you can loosen it on the table. You can use anything which is easy to do that. And you keep kneading. So this might take you up to five minutes. Almost everything in. So I would not do a double amount if I do it by hand and I would rather start over again. It's just the labor. It's uh, quite intense. So they call it making pasta or ravioli. It's the labor of love. What you can do as well, you can finish your pasta dough and pack it in some plastic wrap and in some tin foil. The tin foil will protect that the pasta doesn't get dark because it protects from oxygen. And you can freeze it. And whenever you feel like you want to make pasta, take your dough out and you can work it from there. Okay, so I'm almost there with my five minutes kneading and you can see my dough becomes nice and elastic. So this is what you want. And and you have to let your pasta now for 20 minutes up to an hour to rest before you can actually start working it. So a lot of people always leave their pasta in a bowl or pastry. I quite don't like to do that because I don't have the strength to roll it out. So I'm trying to make it as flat as I can, wrap it in some plastic wrap then and then I will put it into the fridge and let it rest in the fridge. So it feels very dry but if you leave it in the fridge it will keep it moist and it will be nice elastic to roll it out. My plastic wrap so you want it really tight and you wrap it nice and tight around it. Tucked in, try not to be too round because you want to roll it out so you keep it to the maximum width of this and you can push it out a little bit more in a longer way. Okay, so this goes in the fridge for another half an hour now. My pasta dough has now been sitting in the fridge for an hour. So now as you can see already, it's getting nice and elastic. So we can unwrap this and we use a pasta machine to roll it out. So we're gonna add a bit of flour onto the table first. Take our dough out. If you find it's too difficult for you to use a big piece, you can cut it into half 
a little bit of dusting on top and use a rolling pin best a rolling pin which is a bit more heavy i use marble but anyone will do and you roll this out a little bit lengthways so you don't want to go from the width more than what your pasta machine is so i think it might be easier just with the half it might become a little bit too thick on the sides so i'm gonna fold this over again if you fold it just make sure you take all the flour away and fold it over so now we can make it nice and straight again So if you don't have a pasta machine, you can roll this out by hand, but it's very hard labor. So maybe next Christmas, your boyfriend, husband, wife, whatever wants to give you something nice, they can buy you a nice uh, pasta machine. You can buy one which you can put on and uh, do it electric, or you can use a hand one. Okay, so I have rolled it out. I put it onto the widest setting. Some they start by number six, some by nine, some by one. This one works with one, and I'm starting to roll it out. Okay, so if it gets longer, it's more difficult. So number one, you always want to do two times or your biggest setting. So you see I'm holding it now with my right hand side and I'm rolling it with my left hand. If you feel your dough becomes too sticky, add a little bit more flour on both sides and you go to the next setting. What you can do after halfway, you switch. Okay, so you do that until it becomes almost see-through. Don't be lazy, don't jump numbers. You will regret at the end. And always make sure when you feed it in, you go straight in. Another tip, I didn't add it any pepper, not because I don't like the pepper inside, if you have peppercorns, they can destroy the pasta. So that's why you don't add any pepper. So you keep it just with the salt. And you see it becomes longer and longer. So you get quite a bit out. So make sure it's straight in. When you get to the last number, you do the last number two times. So you can see when I touch it now, I don't want to hold it with my fingertips like this. So I'm actually holding it with my back hand. even go one more thing. So now this becomes a little bit sticky. I'm adding a little extra flour onto it. So this will be my thinnest. Uh, another tip, if you have pasta in there, never roll it backwards. You always have to continue. Even if you went stew, you have to continue, otherwise you break your pasta machine. This pasta machine has now rolled my dough nice and thin and now I need to cut. I'm going to cut it now into strips this length, maybe 15 to 20 centimeters. Put an extra flour on and let it dry. Don't let them stick on top of each other. Put them loose, otherwise you're going to have a bad surprise that they will stick. And now I'm just dusting them. Right, so we have cut all these pieces of pasta, so we could use a knife and uh, cut them in some strips. Or you could use the machine and you get these parts where you can have tacchitelli or linguini and we roll it through the machine, which is much more easy. Right, so we're going to just add it onto our machine and roll it through there. So if you like it very long, you could leave these strips, strips a little longer. I prefer to be able to eat them. And now it's like magic. Hold one hand underneath here and collect them. So now these ones you can put onto a stand like what I have here. If you don't have one like this, um, I always make sure I clean my floor, then I put my washing stand up and I put the whole thing overnight there and then the next morning I can pack it away. So let's do a little bit more, that little thing doesn't want to go through. Here we go. So you could make linguinis as well, any shape you like. And on here and let it hang. So you leave this overnight and it will be nice and dry. If you like to cook it immediately, obviously a pot with hot water inside and you can eat it immediately. If I make pasta, I like to make a lot because then I don't need to do it each and single time. And again, catching and on top. So when you hang this, just make sure they are all nice and loose because you don't want them to stick to each other either. So you could even add a little bit more flour on, I think like this, they, they hang pretty cool. You can see this pasta gives you a lot. 
When you cook this homemade pasta, it cooks in less than five minutes and it will give you almost triple the amount. Okay, so I'm going to leave this to dry overnight and then tomorrow I can take it off the stand and leave it in my container. The best is to leave it in your kitchen. You don't want any moist air, but you don't have to be particular that it has to be extremely dry. I just make sure my kitchen is clean and I leave it overnight just in the kitchen. That's perfect. If you have a pasta machine and you need to dry it or clean it afterwards, do not ever put this into the water. You just want to use a dry cloth. Wipe it off because that will protect it. It doesn't become any leftover flowers inside to become a lump or anything. You only wipe it off. That's the way how you clean a pasta machine. So even if you just use this part here, you just wipe it with a cloth. All right, so overnight you can let them dry and then you have something like this now. You can keep them in the container and they will last you for a few weeks or if even longer in my house. They last maybe two weeks, that's it. So to take them off, you gently hold them. If they do break when you take them off, that's no problem, but very gentle, put them into the container. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you're gonna have a lot of fun making this pasta or in this case, tacchitelli, little uh, say as well, Italians, uh, tacchitelli means a uh, little tongue. And uh, when you cook it, just throw it into hot boiling water and cook it al dente means uh, cooked to the teeth. Uh, I explained it in one of my other videos, mac and cheese. So that's where you can uh, pick up how you can cook pasta. Have fun, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.